Good afternoon, Upper Sixth. So, another Paper 3 2024 video. Uh, this one focusing on the extended elements of the marketing mix. So, we'll briefly touch on the standard four Ps, then we'll talk about people, process, and physical evidence in context with Next. I've used their annual report from 2022, it's roughly when the paper was written. Um, as the basis of this for you and use the context from that annual report. So just going through the process, for example, you can download these reports and you can see here we've got their business model. We've got their KPIs. We've got a basic SWOT analysis. Uh, we've got a bit of CSR in there. Um, and you've got all of their company accounts ranging in this report for about three years. So there's a lot you can do with this information if you want to revise. And obviously we've looked at it next quite a lot, um, along with, you know, the Fraser Group and, and companies like that. So it's really interesting how you can go through this document and you can pull out everything to do with the seven P's. So I thought we may as well just define these key terms in context with the information found in this report. So looking at there, we've got our products. Now we understand that they've got a range of products. They've got a number of products in different market segments. And also when we talk about these third party brands, they're selling Boss, for example, and barber jackets and lots of other things. So what Next used to be was Next selling their own products, but there's loads of third party stuff going in there. They seem to be bucking the trend, whereas before they were just doing their own. Remember, these are the cockroaches of the high street, um, and now they're turning more into a department store. So in some ways, I've worn a barber jacket. Maybe I'll now go to Next. Maybe I didn't ever go to Next before. And then I pick up some Next own brand stuff as well. So think about that cross-promotional activity that we talked about um, in a previous video. We've got our prices. It's not just about price. Now, we know in a recent video we talked about how they've had record profits. They were expecting profits to dip, but they managed to sell more full price stuff than expected. OK, so we think we're thinking about pricing strategies starting off at full price and then possibly coming down skimming last time I checked but you can delay the coming down bit depending on your management information and that's exactly what they did but another profitable part of their business which should be underpriced as well is also their credit facilities so you can buy now pay later they've got their own credit they've got their online catalog which gives you an account as an individual and then if you don't pay it off quick enough they'll charge you 35 percent interest um, so in some ways, this is ease of access for people that don't have the cash to buy stuff. And there's an opportunity there to A, sell full price stuff um, and B, hopefully, let's hope they don't pay their bills on time so you can start charging them interest. And this will add profitability to all of the garments. The place where well, we've got our physical stores and we've got online and we know that from our distribution place um, P from the marketing mix and also you've got some benefits down there as well so if I buy it online I could return it to the local store or exchange it and in the next slide you're going to see how many of next stores are actually losing money but next overall is making a bucket load of profit so it makes me think that it's worth keeping open some, if not all, of these loss-making stores to encourage people to use the website. Because if I'm buying from Boohoo, I can't physically take it back to a Boohoo to then get the size up or down, for example. So in some ways, maybe next having this multi-channel um, retail company gives it a strategic advantage over the likes of Boohoo and others. So promotion, well, we all know about promotion. We've got specific targeting customer segments. If I've got an account with them, they know what I buy, when I buy, how much I spend. Am I spending more or less at different times of year? Um, am I stopping buying those essentials like my jeggings? Maybe I'm buying them from Marks and Spencers. Maybe they can send me a voucher um, to encourage me to come back. 
the strength of this type of advertising is all based on really good MI, management information data. Um, and the more information we have about our customers, the more we can encourage them to spend their money. OK. On to the extended parts of the marketing mix. So people, this is so important. Now, if you think that they've got loads of stores that are losing money and they're keeping them open, probably to help them boost their online sales. When I walk into Next, I'm expecting exceptional customer service. If I call up Next to their call centers, I'm expecting them to be well trained and actually helping me. So if I do walk into a next and I see some miserable gits stood behind the counter and when I go over and talk to them, they clearly just don't want to talk to me. I'm never going back. By the way, I've never had that experience in next. I find the, the members of staff at next very helpful and generally happy. Um, and that's very important. And if I teach you, you'll understand how much I tend to moan about super dry and how I went into super dry once um, and asked for something in my size. And being a rather big Dalmatian, um, they said to me, mm, I don't think so, sir. Um, I've never been back to super dry since and I've probably told the story 200 times. So if you're if you are in a reduced and shrinking traditional bricks and mortar retail environment, you better make sure that your staff in the shops are brilliantly trained and enthusiastic. Because if they're not, it will have a negative impact on your online business as well. OK, the process is so important for companies like Next. We've got third party stuff coming in. We've got customer expectations of 24 hour fulfillment on deliveries if I order off the website. Um, if something goes wrong with it, I need it to go back to store or online. And you've also don't want to be holding bucket loads of stock. You don't want damaged stock. You want this stock to be in the right stores to sell it because different stores will probably sell a different mix of clothing. So you've got to make sure all of this is working together. And this is why, if you read the company accounts of Next from 2022 and 23, they talk about the importance of the process, investing in software, investing in fulfillment centers, warehouse automation. All of those sort of things are so important. And this might be part of distribution in place, but if you're thinking about the process, it's how it's all linked together. Remember, these extended marketing mix elements were written after, way after the four P's were written. And it was because of the evolution of e-commerce in the mid to late 1990s. And they they thought it was really important to emphasize the importance of this on the entire marketing mix. Yes, all these elements work together seamlessly. However, some, depending on what's happening in the world and in the business and in the economy, some might be more important than others at different times. And this is why we like writing essays about extended or the marketing mix. Physical evidence is one of the ones that students tend to struggle with a little bit. And this is all about aesthetically pleasing. And is it easy to use the website? When I go into a store, does it look clean, inviting? Um, can I find things? So it's very important. And if you're trying to spend tens of millions of pounds on advertising, telling me that your clothes are smart and everything else. When I walk into a store and I find them crumpled on the floor, that's not going to do your brand image any good whatsoever. So you have to think about the synergy between the brand that you want me to imagine and the realities of the brand. And then remember, you've got multi-channel retail, online, offline and delivery. And then you've got third party fulfillment in there as well. So when you've got the likes of Boss, for example, and Barber, um, is that coming directly from a next warehouse or is that coming directly from Hugo Boss Warehouse? I'm not sure. I'm hoping it all comes from the next fulfillment centre. At least next can process all of this. OK, so physical evidence 
is how it looks, how it feels, and all in context with my perception of brand positioning, for example. So here, reinforce, reinforcing the quality and accessibility of next offerings. Well, yeah, but actually, what's my expectations? When I go into TK Maxx, I expect it to be a jumble sale. That's just TK Maxx. And I enjoy rooting through all the stuff, searching for that maybe special deal that I perceive I'm going to save money on. However, when I walk into Next, what do I expect? OK, so here's an interesting data extract, which I'll refer to in the mops in the essay, which I'm not going to walk through the entire essay. I'll just talk about elements of it. You can mark it and decide what you think. So there's two different things that I'm going to show you. This is the first one, and then I'll show you a version two. So option A is that next close all of their loss making stores all of their stores they close them unless they make money okay and um, this still means that obviously we've got temp they're expecting retail sales to dip okay like for like sales in their shops not the company in their shops they expect to go down by about 10 percent um, so if they go down to 135 stores, which is significantly reducing their store network, um, they are still going to have negative cash flow over that period of time. Now, when you're thinking about forecasts, the further into the future it goes, probably the less we know about the future. And when we're looking at 2037, unless my glasses are seeing that wrong, um, wow, this is this is basically throwing darts at a dartboard yeah blindfolded nearly if they keep them all open this is what they expect their cash flow for the stores to be now this is not oh my goodness what's going on with the retail stores this is should they keep them open and are they that important for the online business which is clearly where all the growth and the profit is okay now as we can see down the bottom here, we don't need to do any maths. 195 stores are currently losing money for next. This is in their company accounts. How exciting. You can just download this information and read this. Now, that's very, very important when you think about the elements of the marketing mix. So why would they bother having this physical environment for me to walk into when it's going to lose them money? Well, that's because Boohoo and ASOS don't have one. And they definitely don't have a network of 330 stores. And there we go. That's the importance of that process. That's the importance of the people. When I walk in with my return at Next because I bought it online, they process it properly. They do it with a smile and they see if they can help me in any way when I go in there. OK, that might be the difference between them making the profits they're making at the moment and some of their competitors who aren't super dry. So going through the marketing mix again, um, I've put pros and cons here for you. I'm not going to read them out for you. I've done it. I've done a textbook definition. Obviously, we would contextualize this around the case study and I've chosen a pro and a con. You need to have pros and cons for the entire extended marketing mix. When we go on to people, it's the people that are involved. So you're looking for different elements of the business where they might be involved. And in the case study, we've got call centers, we've got shops, and it, we've also mentioned warehouses as well. Excuse that, I'm vulnerable to an attack of something. So if we think about the case study when we go to it you're looking for evidence of where people might be employed and how that might um, it be involved in the process the process the mechanisms for delivering the product to the customer i'm sure we could describe that in a better way couldn't we um, we can think about how that helps next fulfill their goals through customer retention and stuff like that and remember when you invest in an automated warehouse, you're talking tens, if not hundreds of millions of pounds. 
So this is a long-term investment appraisal, return on capital expenditure, those sorts of considerations which will come into it, and then consider what would happen if they didn't invest in this automation. Okay, If you ever get a chance to look around an automated warehouse, take it. I've been to the John Lewis one in Milton Keynes, and that was probably six or seven years ago. Um, and it's amazing. You've got these little robots that, not robots as in physical robots you'd expect, um, but little suction cups that'll pick stuff up and put it in bags and wrap the bags. And then every now and then they get this odd thing that needs to be wrapped by a person, um, depending on the shape of it. If you think about next, they also do homewares, for example. So they might have some odd shaped lamps or something. So physical evidence, remember, is the environment and elements to support the existence of, sorry, and quality of the service. This is online and physical presence, okay? So is it easy to navigate the website is part of this physical evidence. When I walk into a store, is it a mess? Is it dirty? All those sorts of things. So we're thinking about this, but there's some basic pros and cons here. You need to make sure you've got pros and cons for every single definition in the A level and then contextualize it in the exam. So here is the case study. And at this point, you will pause in a second after I've quickly gone through the question and you can plan your 12 mark essay. So it's a 12 mark essay. So P, however, P, however, and A, answer the question, justify your answer. And it's not so much without the process, but I suppose you could get away with that, but it's not the way I wrote it. Um, and then a MOPS, think about the future. Um, and as I say, I, I related uh, my MOPS to um, the future of keeping some of those stores open that are losing money. Now, with this, so, so we're thinking about, so next is targeting a 5% annual increase in sales through enhancement in its marketing mix elements, particularly people, process, and physical evidence. Okay, um, now I've, I've structured this in this way on purpose to support revision of these three elements. Um, if you look through the past paper questions, sometimes you'll see a question that says, is people the most important part of the marketing mix? Yes, it is. However, maybe not because of process. So you're thinking about other parts of it. Um, depending on how they phrase the question depends how much you reflect on the other elements of the marketing mix. OK, if it was a 20 marker, and it said they're considering focusing on people and process, um, evaluate which one of these is most important. You'll do pros and cons for people, pros and cons for process, and then decide which one. And maybe in your mops, you'll then refer to how important the entire marketing mix is. But don't get excited um, with showing off your entire knowledge. Remember that motivation theory question from last year where people just started spewing their knowledge of motivation theory on there. Unfortunately, the examiners only wanted to hear about Taylor and Hertzberg. OK, go carefully that you answer the question. Assess the extent to which the improvements in process, such as modernization of warehouse and website software, are the most important. Here's our hook. OK, still haven't invested in that pen. In achieving its sales growth target compared to the other elements. So we've got compared to other elements here. OK, so... It sort of focuses the question a little bit. However, if I was writing this answer, I wouldn't feel comfortable not mentioning the importance of the seven P's collectively. I'm going to probably do that in my mops because it's really important that we answer the question. OK, pause the video, write yourself a plan after you've read the case study. Um, there's op opportunity to do maths here if you really want to. I've not done anything. Um, I could probably write a couple of other exam questions over this case study. Did you pause? I don't think so. So here is an answer. I'm not going to walk through this, which is why I've not um, used... 
I can't remember what it highly thinks. So transitions um, for the text coming in. So I've highlighted, I've, I've emboldened the, ch uh, the um, chains of argument. After I hit five, I stopped putting bold. Um, there's probably more in there. You can see it's, this, it's the typical, you know, leading to because, and there's some others in there as well. Um, if you if you think about sometimes with the case study, it's quite nice to interpret. The case study could be interpreted. The case study supports this by highlighting. Here's a quote. Um, there was already already a bit of um, context in there. And remember, in the question, we've got modernization and warehouse software. So even though this is repeating that, it does add the significant impact on its efficiency, which is a little bit more. Remember, if it's in the question, it's not context if you repeat it. Now, with this one, with the counter argument, what I've done is I've written a yes, process is important. However, don't forget about the people. Now, I feel more comfortable using a quote in my howevers. I'm not going to write chains of argument for this. I'm just going to write a short sentence. But your howevers must be contextualized. So I'll shove in a quote, skilled workforce. And I just wanted it to be blindingly obvious that this was talking about people. So I put that in brackets just in case the examiner didn't know what skills workforce were. They will, by the way, they're all brilliant. Then my second paragraph, I decided I'm not just gonna talk more about process. I'll save process for my counter argument. I then thought, okay, well, I'm gonna talk about physical evidence. So aesthetically pleasing, physical digital presence, reinforcing, blah, blah, blah. Um, all fits in nicely to the case study. And then I've used process as the counter argument for that. Now, you could have said process is important. However, process might be less important. However, physical evidence might be more important. However you want to write this is up to you as long as there's balance and as long as you're answering the question. OK, so we've got that quote in there again. But I felt it was important um, to contextualize process. OK. Overall, answer the question. Given the emphasis on operational efficiency, there's a big emphasis on that in the case study, it is a, and the clear link to cost management and delivering reliability, that's your justification already written for you, by the way, process could be considered direct quote from the question. Most important element. However, not a counter argument so much but just an acknowledgement that the other elements are important, okay? Along with the other four Ps that collectively contribute to this goal. In the future, if Next retains its stores, back to that data extract, which I didn't put in the main data extract, but we talked about the picture, um, Next PLC's focus on process will be critical in a market where online and offline experiences are increasingly integrated. Now, this is important for your revision notes when you're thinking about paper three. OK, I want to be able to chain uh, to try clothes on. I want to be able to go somewhere local to take them back. Um, you know, all of those sorts of things are really important. I don't want that customer service that I received in Superdry or I'm never going back. OK, very important. And then efficient process will be pivotal to managing inventory deliveries across a large uh, store network, helping them maintain profitability. So the hook is actually sales. We won't hold that against me too much because it was in the mops. But if they've got loss making stores there, profitability is very, very important. It might have been nicer to say maintain sales as well as profitability, just to make sure it was linked to the hook more effectively. OK, you need to decide if it's level four, because remember, we're not aiming for perfection. We're aiming for level four. And then you can decide where it is. Um, there's definitely competing arguments leading to supported judgment. It's contextualized throughout. It's definitely five chains of argument because we would include whatever's written in the however points. Um, and hopefully you think it's towards the top. Maybe it's not full marks. It's not perfect. Um, 
write your own, see how you get on and make sure that you look out for news articles um, between now and your June paper three and look for opportunities to think about the extended marketing mix, the full seven P's. If you're reading articles, you can revise whilst you're reading them. Easy peasy.